Hi YouTube, uh, this is Wolf Den Outdoors coming at you with a new project that we're going to be doing daily and releasing videos on, we may do this once a week, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the project today is we're going to build ourselves a longbow. Uh, I, I don't actually know how to do this. All of the videos I'm going to be doing on my channel are things that I'm learning to do, things I'm practicing, things like that. Uh, I used to have a really nice recurve wood bow that I ended up selling a couple months back. Um, and I decided I wanted to do, I wanted to build a new one. I was missing having a bow, uh, so I found a channel. So I'm going to give him a shout out. It's Kramer Ammons. Uh, I'll post his link down below. This is actually a video of his where he talks about making a longbow from uh, commercial grade store uh, store bought uh, hardwood lumber and in his video he used poplar but in the notes it's noted that uh, later he found out poplar's too soft to make a good bow so I went ahead and bought a piece of oak so this is my one by two oak stave more or less uh, these are all kiln dried so it should be good to go it's nice and flat which will be good uh, so the goal for today is gonna be simple it's gonna be marking out measuring out and cutting out everything I need to do and then gluing in the handle because obviously I mean the bow this is the way the bow goes so the bow is actually shot this way so you look at it there's only three quarters of an inch here there's not a lot for a handle so what Ammon or what Kramer did is he used he cut the piece of board down and then used a piece of the cutoff to glue in as his handle so it was all the same wood I like that but I had a piece of this gorgeous Kokoboro sitting in my garage from a project about a year ago and it's just been sitting there I've been dying to do stuff with it I've played a little bit at the end here routing some edges mangling some stuff seeing if I could cut it and split it like I, I played around with a bit of this but this is just gorgeous wood I mean you look at this grain it's almost it has a little bit of a shine like an iridescence to it um, and some nice reflectivity and I think this would pair very nicely with the beautiful white light color of the oak. So I'm actually going to use a piece of the cocoa burrow and glue that together as my handle. So we're going to go ahead and get going with this today. This project is going to include just a few very, very basic materials. I could use power tools, things like that. I'm kind of one of those old purists. I don't want to. And I, um, I mean, when you're talking bushcraft and outdoors, you're supposed to be making stuff with knives, hatchets, things like that, right? So obviously I've got a couple of measuring tools. Um, I've got a measuring tape so I know how long I'm marking everything. And then I actually have a uh, slide square ruler that I'll be using just for making straight, making sure I'm making lines perpendicular for where I need things to be for glue up and cutting and things like that. Uh, for a saw, we are going to be using a Japanese handsaw. These cut on the pull rather than on the push. So you usually get a much straighter cut. They have a rip saw for ripping down long boards and then a cross cut saw on it. Uh, this one's from Harbor Freight. It's seen me through a lot. It's a, it's a really good saw. As long as you take care of them, they'll last quite a while. Um, so I'm gonna be using that for sawing, for shaping for most of the bow. Uh, I plan on using two things. First one, and you guys will see me with this all the time, this is going to be my Cold Steel SRK. And uh, I'm probably going to use this more when I get around to marking out the handles, uh, cutting out the arrow notches, things where I need to actually take some good chunks of wood out. Um, and perhaps even on the ends when we're marking down the uh, where it tapers down into the points. But we'll get into that in a little bit. And then other than that, for shaving down, normally people use a draw knife. Uh, I don't tend, I don't have one of those right now. Uh, what I do have is a spoke shave. I picked up one of these on Amazon for I think 12 bucks. This thing does wonders. It takes time because it's just like a planer, so it takes off a little bit at a time. But when you're making a bow like this, you do want to take time. If you take off too much material, it can be problematic. So that's basically the tools I'm gonna use. Uh, one of the options I did see, I'm going to use a big piece of wood for this, but what I saw somebody do to make a draw knife if you didn't have one is actually take your knife, 
And let's say, you know what, for kicks and giggles, I'll actually make one. So rather than using this entire eight foot pole, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly saw through this. All right. This is just a piece of pine I had lying around. It actually, I used the big long part for stoking a fire and stuff. You're supposed to take your knife and put it vertically like this into the piece of wood. You know what, rather than hitting the knife, that was a bad idea, because if I hit this and that wood moves, I'm gonna go right down on that blade. So I'm going to do the opposite. I am gonna put the wood on the ground and I'm gonna press this thing in there. All right, um, so in order to really make this thing work, you really need to hammer it down. So I'm gonna use actually this piece of cocoa burrow. That kind of moves the camera. Let me try this on the ground. All right, so by wedging it in like that, we're now able to kind of grip up here. I probably shouldn't have split the wood, but I think it'll still be okay. That I should be able to grip the handle, grip the wood, and actually use it like a draw, use a regular knife as a draw knife. So that, that's an option you can use, and I'll give that a shot when we get to the actual shaping and see what happens. So for right now, again, I just have to mark out, cut out, and then glue because we're using Type Bond 3 Ultimate Wood Glue. I don't recommend using any other wood glues. Uh, the Type Bond 2 is not waterproof. This one is, so that's going to be a big deal. We are also going to laminate the front of this bow, but we'll get into that at another stage. So we're going to go ahead and do the actual shaping here. So let me see if I can get the camera down to where we need to be. There we go. All right, so I need eight inches of this Coco Boro. And I obviously don't want to take it from this side where I've been cutting and slicing and causing problems. So I think I'm going to take it from this one. So we're going to go about eight inches down. That's going to give me, let me grab my pencil over here, which I dropped when I was banging that knife. So an eight inch pencil mark is going to be about right there. So again, using this square, it's kind of a speed square for this ruler. I can just put it across there. Now I know I have a 90 degree line. And the nice part about that is I should be able to line that up more or less with each one of these and get myself a perfect line that goes all the way around this cocoa burrow. It's hard because I got the line on this side where you guys are at, so it's a little bit harder for me to see what I'm doing, but there we go. So now we just have to cut this piece out. The camera wants to move a little bit today. Let's see if I can't fix that a little bit. It's up just a little too high. And yes, I'm sitting on a Home Depot bucket with a piece of wood on top of it. That's okay. All right. So, I'm going to put that draw knife aside. I'm actually going to set the stave aside because I don't want to cut into it. And then we are going to take this guy right here. So, again, I'm using the cross-cut teeth. And I'm going to take this really slow and actually keep my finger right here to try to keep this up straight up and down as much as possible. If you take it really slow and you start, because it's on a pole, you get a much more consistent cut. And see how nice and straight that is? That is a gorgeous, easy one and very thin kerf, which means this metal is not very thick. Uh, it's pretty flimsy and thin. But it means when you cut, you're not taking out a bunch of material. So we're going to go ahead and continue. 
by holding it here at the back, I'm actually getting a better draw and a straighter draw on it. And what I'm, the reason I'm kind of working around like this is a couple reasons. One, I don't want the piece of wood to blow out, which is I have a bunch of splinters on one side that I mess it up. And two, by cutting it in this fashion, I'm actually maintaining a fairly consistent line that goes all the way around to ensure that these top edges, when this edge actually glues up, it's going to be a very nice straight edge on the, on the glue up. So get back to this. I've only got a little bit left to really work through, which is the nice part. Make sure I have the right teeth. I had the rib teeth in there. That wouldn't have worked. All right, so back in. There we go. Now, a little bit of warning about this. Oh. See, it's funny, it's all orange on the outside, but if you actually look right here, it's almost a purple color. I don't know if you guys can see that very well or not, but this has like some purples, it's got some oranges, it's a beautiful, beautiful wood. If you are using this, please be careful. Uh, some people are very sensitive to the dust, so when you're sanding, and when I get to sanding near the end, I will have a mask on and a respirator because people can be very sensitive to it. And the last thing you want is to wind up breathing in a bunch of dust that makes you sick. So that's gonna be the part of our hand that's gonna be laminated. Obviously, that's a real nice size. That's eight inches. So it's time to mark out the big bad boy. So this is supposed to be, I have notes here, uh, wrote them on an envelope. The overall length is 64 inches. So if I measure from one side out to 64 inches, that gives us to right here. All right. So again, uh, the way Kramer does this is this section right here is actually because it's a six foot board. Uh, if you go out to 64, 64 plus eight, 72, 72 inches is six feet. So this part right here is actually all you need. You don't need an extra set of wood. I just, I wanted to do something a little special with mine in the process of making it, which might be a waste of very expensive wood because the cocoa Boro is kind of spendy. So I think a one by four board that was like three feet long that I, or two feet long that I bought was like 40 bucks. Um, but it was, it was for another project for my wife. So there's our cut line, putting an X here to tell me that's done. Now we want to find the center line. Um, I will go ahead, there's little screws here in this table I need to grind off. In case if you were wondering why I just jumped, I just dragged my finger across the screw. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this tip here. I don't have to mark all the way around like I did at the Coco Burrow. I just wanted to do that to show you guys how it's done. Um, but you can actually get a very, very decent straight cut off of this without that. So we're going to go ahead and get through this. With any saw, my dad always taught me you let the saw do the work. So there's not a whole lot of, especially when you're trying to get these straight and finer cuts, like with a saw like this, you don't want to do a whole lot of pushing down. You don't want to really crank on the saw. That's what's going to get you some weirder cuts versus just letting the teeth do the work and cutting through. That's really going to get you the best results. And on something like this, it does take off very little material at a time. So, like right there, I had a little bit of tear out, but it didn't tear out onto the, onto the working end of the board. It tore, tore out on the other side, which is fine. But if this had been our handle, I mean, we still had a pretty clean break. I mean, it's a, it's a relatively straight cut. It's a little bit off, but 
not enough to where I'm, I'm not really worried about it. So we will not need this for the rest of today. But again, so here's the cocoa burro and here's the oak right next to each other. Cocoa burro is actually a little bit thicker. So I think that's gonna play to my advantage, give me a light. I got big hands, so that's gonna give me a little bit extra room for a little bit bigger handle when I start shaping it. But essentially you can see they're both eight inches. So that it would work, you don't need this. You can just use the oak handle and go oak to oak and create that nice handle. I mean, that's gonna be a, that would be a gorgeous handle too, to be honest. So, all right, now what we're gonna do come find my measurements is I need to go to the halfway mark and find the center. So half of 64 is going to be 32. Conveniently right there in the front of the camera. So we're going to say 32 inches is about right there. So we're going to, again, using this to give us nice straight lines all the way across. I'm gonna put a C through here to mark that that's the center of my board. Um, and then the center line, I'm gonna trace these back across, at least to the back. And the main reason for that is, so there's actually two terms. There's the back of the bow and the belly of the bow. The back of the bow is actually the part that faces out when you're shooting, which I'm actually gonna be, have be these parts where I'm making the notes. And that's mostly so I can see them after I've glued on the cocoa boro. I don't want to like make all my notes and this is the center line and all this stuff and then put the wood right over the top. That would be bad. So then we need to go an inch and a half in and make a mark. So the nice part about this slide rule is it allows me to move so I can go right here or an inch and a quarter, sorry. So an inch and a quarter up. So that's actually, that means this is gonna be the top end of the board down here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and come down here cause I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna write a little T up here. That's just gonna let me know which direction's up. I can look for the T. So again, inch and a quarter up from the arrow rest here. So if I match this into the board I'm at an inch and a quarter right here so I can come up. So this is going to be where the arrow rest is going to be located. Um, I'll go ahead and lay out everything and then I'll transfer the lines over afterwards. So uh, that's going to be the inch and a quarter. Now we need two inches, which conveniently happens to be right where my uh thing was set so i need to go two inches from this line up and so right there and what this is going to give me is the fade outs and that's obviously the handle is not going to be an inch and a half thick it's going to be more along the lines of say this thickness of this pine board which i believe is about an inch wide. So we have to take off some on each side right here. You can see there's some extra on each side that needs to come off. But you don't want to have a square step. So you don't want to have the handle here and then it just step off and be a square hard shape. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to have the arrow rest here and then it's going to be a fade out from where the arrow knock is. It's going to fade out and up to these uh, pieces up here. So then we need to come down two and three quarters of an inch. This will give us a four inch handle. So if I come down from here, two and three quarters inches is right there. And again from there, so this is our handle right here, this four inch spot. And that's, that'll work for me. I can deal with that. And from there, we want another two inches. So I'm gonna lay this out again. And this is our two inch fade outs on the bottom. 
so so that's basically that's our handle layout right there and now all I really need to do at this point is in transferring I need to transfer out where the fade outs are so that gives us a full 8 inch handle so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these these two marks the center line doesn't matter um, all those other marks we made on the front are for when we shape the handle later. I just really need to know at this point where I'm going to be putting this handle. So I've got these two marks laid out here, as you can see. And then the Coco Boro is going to sit right inside of them and just be glued up like so. Uh, got a couple wood clamps for doing that because we needed that for... Um, to make sure the wood clamps here i'm trying to look at this inside which side i want down and i think because this side's got a chip up here already and it's got this beautiful ingrain that is just it's nice and straight versus this other one's a little bit darker and this one has a straight flat face i'm going to use this side to glue down because in the end i'm actually going to be carving a lot of this down to the wood anyways uh, when i'm shaping the handle so i'm going to go ahead and one of the things you need to do is you do need to rough up that handle bit just to try to give the wood glue some extra places to hold on to. So I am going to use the teeth of this. What I'm basically doing is creating more square footage actually. When you put scratches and grooves into wood, you are actually, actually increasing the surface area which means you're increasing the amount of places in the surface area for wood to, uh, for glue to grab onto and bond with, which will work out better during your glue up. Because you want, you want these, especially with a bow that's gonna be under tension and have all these problems, you're gonna want it to have as much surface area as much glue up as much grip as you can possibly get out of something like this because you want it to bond really really well all right I think those were both good enough um, for now so what I want to do go ahead and pop up this wood glue going to do a first a very light, very base coat. And the purpose of that is just going to be to let the wood soak up some of this. It's very common when dealing with these glues. I'm just going to go ahead and use this piece of oak to kind of rub it in. Is that the wood glue, the wood actually soaks up that first layer of glue a little bit. So you want to make sure it's nice and evenly spread, but you want to let the wood glue or the wood and the glue get soaked up together just so you get that much better of a bond. So actually I've got enough here, I think, that I can actually, for the most part, get my first layer of glue. Mostly, I mean, this first layer is just supposed to be a little light layer to let it soak in. So I'll get this first layer on here, just using what was left on that stick. All right, so we got that all nice and coated. We'll go ahead and talk about next steps while we're letting this stuff kind of tacky up a little bit. So once this tacky gets tacky, we're going to go ahead and... Um, let it glue. It's got to glue up for 24 hours, so it'll be perfect for tomorrow night, ready to go. Um, what we are going to go ahead and do uh, is also start shaping it. So we're going to end up doing shaping the limbs. So we're starting from this point, and we're coming down to a pretty thin amount, maybe half of this thickness, maybe a little bit more. I'm not going for a super heavy pat, uh, war bow here. I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys back up so I can talk to you. I don't want to make a war bow. I'm not, 
uh, trying to create like an 80 pound, 100 pound monster, even a 60 pound. For this being my first bow, I would be happy with it being in the 30 to 40 pound range. Usually that's what a lot of like women can shoot is uh, 30 to 40 pounds when they're hunting. So it's still a good hunting bow. Um, anything that's gonna allow it to be a nice fast bow that's going to be still usable for target practice. And again, this is my first one ever making one. I've never done this before. I've watched this video a couple of times and kind of drooled over it and went, man, it would be cool to make your own bow. And if you know how to make it out of wood like this and have the skills to do it by hand and say, say you're out in the woods and you need to make a survival bow. If you're able to have your knife with you and chunk it into a, like a, let's say a tree branch rather than a one by two, then you can actually still scrape and get that bow and get it worked. You can work the angles of the knife a little bit. The more shallow you go, the less you're going to take off and you can almost turn it into a spoke shave. You get a little bit steeper, more aggressive knife and you've got yourself a draw knife. So it's going to allow you to be able to actually build like a survival outdoors bow with relatively simple tools for because you've done it in a more controlled environment like what I'm doing now. It's, it's one of those things, uh, you know, practice in a controlled environment. So then when you're out in the real world, you've got some experience and are able to adjust for it. I mean, that's what pros and athletes do. They run drills and work in controlled environments and they know exactly what they're gonna be doing because when it's game time, then they're gonna be more prepared. Same deal here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and check this wood is, it's kind of tacky. It's not huge, but I, I think it's, I think it's about as tacky as it's going to get. As I'm rubbing this on, I'm realizing that this stuff, when it dries, is waterproof. And this might not be such a good idea to have on my skin. So, got to wipe that off for sure. Because that could be problematic. And then the, it's, it's kind of a cool day. It was rainy earlier today, so it's not, this one's almost dry. So we are going to go ahead and the sun moved behind some clouds. I can actually see. So we're going to go ahead and uh, glue both of these down together. And then that'll end the video because we'll, we'll let this cure and then we'll get back to this tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead Hey, guys, come on. Bo, Ty, knock it off. The dogs are wrestling. So I'm going to go ahead and use this oak. The nice part is even if, when this glue dries, I can always sand it off and I can still use this piece. So maybe I will find another wood that's darker or a different color and make the bow out of it and make a piece out of this. So we are going to go ahead. So now I'm using this to wipe just not excess, but just make sure there's an even coating all across this whole thing. Now we've got a nice, good, even coating of glue all the way to make, just to make sure this handle has the most opportunity to bond. All right, so we've got our glue side of our cocoa boro. I'm gonna place it down right there, try to center it. And now I've got a couple of clamps here. This one, I love these. I wish I had more of these. This is a DeWalt clamp. It's seen a lot of use, a lot of abuse. It's a little rusty. It's been used indoors and outdoors. This thing does 600 pounds of pressure. Or maybe it's 300. Don't quote me on that. I, I know it's a lot. I've, been, I, I've used this thing for a bunch of other things, including car maintenance, including, you know, just a bunch of things where I need to exert a lot of force just by gripping. It exerts a lot of force. So we're going to use it to exert a lot of force on this clamped glue wood joint. Now one of the tricky parts about clamping a wood glue joint like this is getting your pieces lined up when you clamp because they want to move around a bunch because it's, uh, there we go. Because of all the wood glue and stuff, it can be real easy for them to kind of slip and get some differential. So there we got it clamped on one side. On the other side, I've got a massive three foot clamp. It was just what I happen to have out here in the yard right now. 
And so I'm going to clamp that side down. It's not as strong as this clamp is, but it'll do in a pinch. So um, we'll go ahead, leave this to cure for 24 hours, and we will come back tomorrow to take it apart and start shaping this thing and actually making a longbow. So again, if you guys want to know where you can watch a video to do this from somebody who's actually done it and knows what they're doing, go check out Kramer Aarons on YouTube. Uh, Kramer Ammons. Sorry, dude. Uh, I don't know why I wanted to call it Aarons. Um, but Kramer Ammons, I'll link to his channel in the, in the video below. And then, uh, or in the comments down below, and we'll be able to get going on this and just kind of see where it takes us. And you guys get to watch me possibly fail at something huge. So, sounds like fun. We'll see you guys all next time. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.